Hello! Today we're looking at this. This is Bose's first lifestyle base module. So, it's a bit different from the other ones. Pretty much all Bose today uses two 5.5 inch woofers. This is different. This uses a single 8 inch, and we're going to have a closer look at that today. We're going to look inside it, but the bigger point of this video is cleaning. And for which, as you can see, I have cleaning products here. I've got some stuff in an orange bottle. A bumper and trim gel. I use that for pretty much anything that's got plastic on. And some microfiber cloths because I couldn't find anything else. So, have a little look at this. As you can see, it has a huge heat sink on it. Let's turn it around a bit. It's very heavy too. It's like 20 kilos. Very heavy for a Bose. It's got a huge heat sink in the front. Normal speaker outputs. You don't see this anymore. It's just spring terminals. Now switch input. Very simple, nothing great. The front, bass and treble controls, and yes, before anyone does say anything, this is how you sit it. See the Bose logo here? That's how you know. You can pretty much put it however you want, except for facing this way or facing this way, for obvious reasons. Alright, well, you're watching the tech guy, and let's open this up. So the first thing we have to do is take out any screws. I've become quite proficient at removing screws and things. Nice. Simple design and easy to open. Thanks, Bose. So this system came out in 1981. And uh, it's made in America. Which uh, you don't see very often anymore. It's cheaper and easier to build things in China, which is unfortunate for the American economy, but hey, what are you going to do? It'd be nice to see companies like Bose bring back their uh, manufacturing to America. But hey. So this is a lot easier to work on than a modern lifestyle system by a long shot, for the simple fact of you know, everything's laid out relatively nicely. There's nothing... There's no clips in the way to open it, which is great. Especially for someone like me who wants to clean it out. Uh, the newer Bose lifestyle system I've got, the 48. <laughs> You've seen the video of opening that, and it's a pain in the butt. But this, once this screw comes out, you're going to see how easy this is. This has these damn screws, huge. Pizza. Oh. Move and you. Man, man, this heavy. There's a bulk of your weight. Sit there, you mother. No. Right. So, let's a look at this. Ooh, 10,000 microphone caps. Where did you go? Right. So, what you're looking at here is the main board. Now, everything from preamplification over here to amplification, everything's here. Nothing happens in the receiver itself, except for volume up and down. That's about it. So, okay, let's have a little look. These over here are preamplified chips. As you can tell, this time I actually looked things up before I started speaking. Got the amplifier for the cubes over here. Hello. That's for the, oh, I should probably turn that around. This is for the subwoofer. There's some really big caps in here. These are all, um, all these caps are Nichicon branded. So it's not like they're cheap or anything, which is nice. Nice little relay over here. No relay for speaker protection, no, this just turns it off and on. Oh, ginormous power supply over here though. Check out the size of this power supply. Yeah, well, I wouldn't, uh, Disagree with saying that and do 350 watts. These are what's interesting though. These are the, where the um, speaker terminals are. Only if here we have a capacitor and an inductor. And I'm wondering if the crossover on these is passive and that's what's you know cutting off the base for the cubes is just what's underneath here. If so, I mean, that's a real simple way of doing it. Uh, let's flip back over here. The size of these caps, these are monster size blowers. These are 10,000 microfarad, 50 volt Nichicons. They ain't messing around. 
All right, so we've had a little look at the board. Can anyone spot where a failure might have happened? No? Look down there. Something went bang. Now, you see a lot of glue around here, but no, this is actually, it's broken. I need to replace that. It's still working at the moment, so I'm okay with it. Let's look inside the module itself. All right, what you're looking at is the single lane inch woofer. Look at the size of that thing. That is a beast. And I'm pretty sure it's been replaced because the base module power unit, power board, says 1989, but this says the 27th of the 10th, 1992. So I'm guessing this has been replaced. We are going to take that in a moment. Another thing I'd like to poke out is the thickness of this wood. It's like an inch thick all over it. They are not messing around. This is really, really well built. Why can't they be built like this now? I mean, another from Bozard. <laughs> have to cut their profits a bit. I mean, this was only a $1,500 system. Let's take this woofer out. All right, screws are out. Here we go. Let's have a look. Ooh. Yep, that's pretty decent. Wow. What happened to you, Bose? You used to make nice stuff. Yeah, nice one and a half inch voice cool in there. It's not playing around. All right, let's put this aside. I have to do, some bit of, do a little bit of cleaning in here. Hmm, nice construction. Very impressed. Well, we're just going to start the cleaning part of this by getting rid of some of these cobwebs. Because, boy, is there a lot. Let's get some up. Yippee, yummy. Wonderful. Get up in that port. The inside's pretty clean, actually. I can't imagine how much we'll get inside here. Might put some new gear in here as well. I can't imagine this glue being very strong after all the... Oh, no, no, actually. I take that back. Yeah, that's pretty strong. No. Yeah. That's looking a lot better. Looks a lot nicer. Might redo some glue in here, just to you know, help alongside the glue that's already in it. As you can see over the corner there, there's a lot of glue. Look at it. Look at this dirty bugger. We're just gonna get some orange cleany stuff and start spraying it down, I guess. Microphone course, I'm gonna just start wiping down, getting rid of this dirt. Mm, just a single wipe over it. it. Starts to look a million times better. This probably hasn't been cleaned since it was bought. <laughs> wow. Already looks a billion times better. You can see these spots on the front. I'm not particularly sure what those are. But they do seem to be coming off. No. Alrighty. <clears throat> As you can see, it looks a million times better. But we're going to protect it with this. Let's pour a bit of this on. And now I'm going to start rubbing this into it. Wash this. You see the color it is at the moment? Oh yeah. Can you see the difference? Can ya? <laughs> Alright. Well, as you can see, this thing looks a million times better. Look how nice and clean it is. Oh, I can imagine this is what it looked like in 1989. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, well, we got to start reassembling this thing. All right, so as you can see, she's all back together. Well, 
the speaker seal. And that's good enough for it, that's all you need. So it's time to put the amplifier on. The last big plate amplifier. Trust me, it's quite of a pain in the butt to position this thing. Now we're gonna just sit the screwdriver in there because we still need to access parts. Replug in the connectors. And it's not made easy by that joint transformer. So, we'll start with the subwoofer and the most important cable, this one here. Alright, now we can just drop it back in. Done. Now we're going to clean this up. First thing I want to do is get rid of this. Hopefully it comes off very easy. Yeah, it's getting off. Don't know what it was for, but yeah. It's off now. gonna go ahead and wipe down all these heatsink fans. I'm not gonna make you watch all that. So I'll get back to you. Well there we go. All the fins are cleaned as you can see. It looks rather nice now. Nice and clean. Bottom is still scratched up. Unfortunately there's no great deal I can do about it. Last thing I'm gonna tackle is that power cord. Most people forget the power cord. I ain't forgetting the power cord. So cleaning a power cord is rather simple. Grab yourself a cloth like this. Get yourself some cleaner, start spraying. All you want to do, grab in your hand like this, grab the cord, and start yanking on that thing. Just like this, and you'll see just from that, we've got some dirt. So just keep pulling on the cable, and pull it back through a few times. There you go. You have a much cleaner, nicer looking cable. It's as simple as that. Well, now all we're going to do is pull the screws back in and she's done. Well, as you can see, it's all nicely cleaned up. It looks almost as good as new. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button. Give the video a like if you liked it. And uh, tune in again next time. Don't know what video I'm making yet, but it'll be something interesting. Thanks, guys.